visit us on the web at nilfiskyou.com. Nilfisk University is the cleaning equipment industry's most comprehensive web-based training and interactive learning resource. Your degree in success is just a click away at Nilfisk University. Welcome to Nilfisk University, where excellence is attained through active learning. Welcome to Use and Care Training for the CS7010 Combination Sweeper and Scrubber. The CS7010 provides the high productivity and flexibility of both a standalone sweeper and standalone scrubber with powerful cleaning in a safe, easy to use platform with low total cost of ownership. The CS7010 is available in the Americas under the Advanced brand and under the Nilfisk brand in other parts of the globe. This training module provides an introduction to the CS7010, including an overview of the machine, how to prepare the machine for use, safe machine operation, and how to care for the machine to keep it performing productively. This course is not intended to be a substitute for the operator's manual that ships with the machine. It is important that you read, understand, and follow all safety and operating instructions in the manual. Doing so will ensure years of safe operation and optimum performance from your machine. After successfully completing this training module, you will be able to identify CS7010 systems, components and their function, explain how to inspect and prepare the machine for daily use, list the steps necessary to start, stop and adjust the sweeping function, list the steps necessary to start, stop and adjust the scrubbing functions, explain how to efficiently and safely operate the machine for daily cleaning, explain machine cleanup procedure, understand optional features and how to use them, describe battery charging and fuel process, and perform daily, weekly, and other routine maintenance tasks. This course concludes with a learner quiz to ensure knowledge has been transferred. Feel free to take notes while viewing this presentation. You can use the toolbar located at the bottom of the presentation window to pause and restart the playback. And you can navigate to any slide in the presentation by clicking its slide title in the outline pane on the right. The CS7010 is available in a number of machine configuration packages. The main difference between the configurations is the type of power source used to power the machine. Engine versions are a hybrid system which uses an engine and generator to create a voltage to power the machine batteries which in turn run all of the machine's electrical systems. Engine hybrid version CS7010 machines are available in LPG, gasoline or petrol and diesel. The e-power version is a battery powered configuration with a large industrial battery providing about five and a half hours of continuous cleaning in typical operations on a single charge. The hydrogen fuel cell version combines the best of both hybrid and e-power versions by having quiet emission free operation like the e-power version and the ability to pull up and quickly refill the hydrogen fuel tank just like one of the hybrid engine versions. Two other key and common options for the CS7010 that may be included on your machine are EcoFlex, onboard detergent system that allows you to adjust detergent concentration strength on the fly and also provide the unique burst of power feature that will be discussed in this training, and DustGuard water mist based side broom dust suppression system to greatly reduce fugitive dust emissions while running the sweeping system. There are additional options that may be included with your machine and are covered near the end of this training. The majority of the operational steps are common to all configurations. Where there are differences in operation, the differences will be clearly highlighted and explained in this training. CS7010 Systems Overview Starting first with the cleaning systems. The CS7010 combines the functionality of a dedicated dry sweep system with dust control and a powerful disc scrub system and allows each cleaning system to be used independently or in combination together. The dedicated sweep system resides at the front of the machine and provides a 61 inch 154 centimeter cleaning path and contains all the systems of a mechanical sweeper including side brooms, main broom, a hopper to capture swept debris with high dump ability for disposal of debris, a full dust control system with vacuum fan and large dust control filter. Some models will also include the optional dust guard system as part of the dust control system that addresses side broom generated dust using a fine water mist applied at the side brooms that sprays out in the area defined by the triangles in this image. 
The dedicated scrub system is a three-disc system providing 48 inches, 122 centimeters cleaning path. The scrub system includes a 75-gallon, 285-liter solution tank with the indicated fill cap location. The scrub deck provides up to 400 pounds, 182 kilograms of scrubbing downforce. The squeegee captures and recovers the used solution and loosened soils via a powerful vacuum system. Recovered dirty solution is held in the recovery tank for later disposal. The optional Ecoflex onboard detergent system may be included with your machine as well. Regardless of the power system that your CS7010 uses, the power systems will be housed in the indicated area which is accessible by opening the top and side panel doors. The operator interface compartment is in this area and beyond the obvious items like the seat includes the following. Operator interface area. Steering system. The steering system starts with the steering wheel, which is tilt adjusting by releasing the lever at the base of the wheel. The CS7010 is a rear steer machine with power steer by wire steering system as standard. When the machine is turned off, the steering wheel will spin freely. When powered up, the CS7010 has built in tactile feedback for when the wheel has reached its turning limits in either direction. This means that the operator will feel more resistance in the steering wheel when the steering system has reached the maximum turn angle. When you first power up the machine, the rear wheel will automatically turn to the position where the rear wheel is facing straight forward. Motion is controlled by a single forward reverse rocker motion pedal. A mechanical brake pedal with integral parking brake lock is standard. The control panel interface is located here. We will go over this in further detail next. Control interface panel overview. The control panel interface is visual and intuitive with machine functions grouped together for easy learning and operation with groupings consisting of scrubbing control switches, sweeping control switches, and hopper control switches. All cleaning actions are turned on and off from the control panel and the LCD display provides visual feedback to the operator for the machine's current configuration settings. While a switch is active, a green LED light will be on in the switch to show which switches are on or off. Scrub system switches consist of one touch scrub system activation deactivation switch which will activate full scrub solution and recovery system with a single push. The above and below plus and minus switches allow adjustment of the scrubbing pressure. While scrub system is turned on, the scrub system will start and stop with machine motion. Solution comes on automatically with the scrub system but can be adjusted or turned off independently using these switches. The vacuum comes on automatically with the scrub system but can be turned off to double scrub or turned on independent of the scrub system if picking up solution on the floor or using the off aisle wand option. These two switches are part of the optional Ecoflex onboard detergent system. The detergent beaker switch allows you to select detergent concentration while the burst of power switch allows you to increase scrubbing pressure, solution flow and detergent strength for a specified duration and then return to the previously set scrub parameters with a single button. If your machine does not have the Ecoflex option then these switches will be non-functional. Sweep system switches consist of the one touch sweep system switch which activates or deactivates the full sweeping system including brooms, vacuum dust control system, optional dust guard system, and opens the hopper door. Like the scrub system, the sweep system will not activate until the machine is in motion. The side broom switch will activate or deactivate the side brooms while sweeping. The broom adjustment switches are used to adjust the side broom and main broom height and will be covered further in the routine maintenance portion near the end of this training. The main broom float switch will allow the main broom to lower further to the ground to help capture debris out of areas with low spots like can occur in asphalt parking lots. The wet sweep bypass switch controls the vacuum dust control fan. The filter shake switch will activate the timed multi-frequency dust filter shaker to clean the dust filter to restore dust control airflow. If your machine is equipped with the dust guard side broom dust suppression option, this switch will turn off the system if you do not wish to use it. 
If your machine is not equipped with this option, this switch will be non-functional. The hopper control switches consist of hopper raise switch, hopper lower switch, hopper door open switch, and hopper door close switch. One other interface that works closely with these buttons is the safety hopper prop rod engagement lever that allows you to safely engage the hopper prop rod without leaving the operator's seat. Use this feature every time you need to go below the raised hopper to inspect or do maintenance on the main broom. Other control buttons include safety horn switch, which is bracketed by the turn signals activation switches for use with the optional turn signals, the LCD display, which provides visual indication of sweep and scrub system settings and other key information for use, configuration, and service of the machine, the I for information button toggles between the cleaning mode screen and the menu screen. The speed limiter switch allows operator to set maximum speed while cleaning for greater control and comfort. The headlight activation switch, the optional high pressure wash pump activation switch, the optional extended scrub switch which can extend scrubbing sessions by applying some recovered solution back to the floor. When you push the I for information button, the LCD display will display the menu. These four switches also serve the purpose of navigation within the menu display as indicated by the arrows above the switches. The final two switches, located just to the right of the steering wheel, are the emergency stop switch and the ignition key switch for starting the machine. To prepare your machine for a day of use, follow these inspection steps to assure the machine power system is ready for action. For hybrid engine units, open the engine access panel on the right side of the machine and the top access compartment cover latch and locate the engine oil dipstick and verify proper oil level. Locate engine air filter service indicator. If the filter has become restricted with accumulated dust, this indicator will show red, indicating it is time to service or replace the engine air filter. Never run the engine without the dual elements of the air filter in place. The air filter housing may accumulate some dust at its bottom. To clean this housing, squeeze and open the rubber seal at the base of the air filter housing to release any accumulated dust. Check engine coolant level, which is located on the left side of the engine compartment by the radiator. Check the fuel level. For LPG machines, look at the fuel gauge on the LPG tank. Note that since the hybrid machines have battery backup, this allows you to run the LPG fuel tank completely empty since the battery backup will provide enough additional runtime to drive and replace an empty LPG tank. For gasoline and diesel hybrid configurations, turn on the key and note the fuel level on the display, then turn the machine back off. If fuel is low, follow these steps. For LPG machines, release the yellow latch and pivot the fuel tank LPG cylinder out from the machine. Disconnect the fuel line from the tank and replace the tank with a full LPG tank and reconnect the fuel line and pivot it back into place. For gasoline and diesel, pull the locking pin allowing the fuel tank to pivot out from the machine. Pivoting the tank out from the machine will avoid accidentally spilling fuel inside of the engine compartment while refueling. After fueling, pivot the tank back into the operation position, lock it in place, and close the engine access panels. For battery electric units, look at the battery charger and confirm the charger has successfully completed the charging cycle. To maximize battery life, the battery should be fully recharged each day of use, even if the battery was not fully depleted. Disconnect battery cord from the charger cord and plug the battery cord into the machine plug receptacle just in front of the steering wheel in the battery compartment and then close the compartment covers. For hydrogen fuel cell units, refer to fuel cell supplier information for checking fuel level and for refueling. For all machine configurations, press the mechanical brake pedal. If the pedal does not feel firm, service the brake before using the machine. Perform a final walk-around inspection of the machine to ensure nothing is damaged or that there is no missing parts, leaks, spills, or anything that looks out of the ordinary. Report any issues found to the supervisor or maintenance personnel. Scrub System Inspection and Preparation Leave the machine in the off condition for these steps. 
open the recovery tank lid and verify recovery tank is empty. If not empty, empty it. Verify recovery tank vacuum shutoff floats are free of debris and balls move freely in each cage. Inspect the brushes. They should be free of debris and have enough bristle life left to allow proper scrubbing action. For best performance, replace the brushes when the bristles get down to 3 quarter inch or 2 centimeters, which is half of the original brush length. In addition, there are multiple brush types with more or less aggressive scrubbing capability. Select the proper brush type for the application. Install the brushes. Start by increasing access to the brush area by lifting and locking the side skirts in the double scrub position. To allow better access to the center brush, pull the yellow lever on the right side to allow the right side brush to shift back and out of the way and then re-engage the lever after the center brush is installed. The brushes attach to the scrub deck with a three lug system. To connect the brush to the drive motor system, all three lugs must be installed through the slotted holes on the deck and then given a sharp twist to lock them in place. Both the right and the center brushes are locked in place with a clockwise twist action. A counterclockwise twist is used for the left side brush. While down at the scrub deck, inspect the side skirt blades for excessive wear and or tears. If the side skirt blades are not in good condition, the machine will leave some water on turns. Each side of the scrub deck has two separate skirt blades to maintain. If a fresh edge is required, loosen the black knob allowing the side skirt edge guard to pivot out of the way. Behind the guard are two wing nuts that hold the leading blade skirt in place. Remove these fasteners, flip or replace the leading skirt, and reassemble. For the trailing skirt blade, release the latch assembly, which will allow the side skirt to be flipped or replaced. Reassemble after changing the skirt, and then lower the side skirt into the normal operation state from the double scrub locked out position. Inspect the rear squeegee. The most critical edge for proper water pickup is the front edge of the rear squeegee blade. Inspect rear squeegee blade for wear or tears. There are four wear edges on the rear squeegee that are available. If you need to put a fresh edge down on the rearmost squeegee blade for better water pickup, then release the latch on the left side to release the retaining strap and flip or replace the squeegee. Reassemble the strap and latch in place. To access the front blade for maintenance, you will need to remove the squeegee from the machine by loosening each of the squeegee locking knobs and then sliding the squeegee weldment back from the machine. Release the front strap locking system on the left side of the squeegee, flip the front squeegee, and reassemble. To reconnect the squeegee weldment to the machine, loosen the black locking plates that look a bit like large clothespins with their corresponding opening on the machine and push the squeegee into place. Once the locking plates are fully engaged with the machine, tighten the squeegee locking knobs hand tight. Sweep system inspection and preparation. Inspect the side brooms and ensure that they are free of debris, in good condition, and have sufficient bristle left to perform sweeping. The side brooms should be replaced when they reach half their original bristle length, or 4 inches, which is 10 centimeters. To remove the side brooms, Raise the hopper to access the underside of the side broom. Turn the central locking system to remove. No tools are required. Note that the left-hand side broom locking system has reversed threading. Inspect the main broom by turning on the machine, fully raising the hopper and engaging the hopper safety prop rod and lowering the hopper until it catches and engages on the safety hopper prop rod support. Then turn off the machine. Walk to the front of the machine and inspect the main broom, making sure it is free of wrap debris, in good condition, and has sufficient bristle left for proper sweeping. The main broom should be replaced when the bristle reaches half of the original bristle length, which is 2 inches or 5 centimeters. If the main broom needs to be removed, open the main broom access door on the right side of the machine and move the dust skirt flap out of the way and then pivot out the idler arm allowing the broom to be pulled out from the side of the machine. To install the main broom, engage the broom core hole 
on the drive motor on the left side of the machine by sliding the main broom through from the right side. Turn the broom by hand to assure it engages with the motor and pivot idler arm back into place and close the side skirt flap. Examine condition of the side skirt dust flaps. If they are torn or worn to the point of being one quarter inch, 0.6 centimeters off of the ground, replace the side skirts. The only way to know if a hopper is empty is to raise and empty it. If you are not sure if the hopper is empty, it is a good idea to empty it now. Adjusting the machine for comfort and filling with water and detergent. Climb into the operator's seat and position seat and steering wheel tilt for comfort. Turn the key switch to turn on the machine. For hybrid engine units, turn the key all the way to assure the engine catches. Note, for safety, the motion pedal must be in the neutral position for the machine to start. At this point, the operator's display and function indicator lights will turn on to illuminate that they are working. After the initial diagnostic startup steps, the graphical display will show key information about the machine, including fluid level in the solution tank, hour meter, fuel or battery level, note for LPG units you will need to look at the LPG tank gauge for fuel level. The CS7010 has a complete diagnostic system, so any problems or faults with the machine will be shown in the display with an error code next to a wrench symbol. Information on specific error codes is available in the machine menu or in the operator manual. Release the parking brake if it is set by pressing on the brake pedal allowing the parking brake lock to release. For optimal safety, each time you get off the machine, you should reset the parking brake again by pressing the brake pedal firmly and then rolling your foot forward to activate the parking brake mechanism at the top of the brake. Drive machine to location where water and detergent is available by pressing forward on the motion control pedal. If you need to move backward, press the pedal towards the back. If the parking brake is set and you try to move the machine, the machine will not move and this icon will appear on the display to inform you that the parking brake is set. If your machine is equipped with the EcoFlex onboard detergent mixing system, fill the solution tank with clean water and then check the onboard detergent tank solution level located under the operator seat to assure that you have enough detergent for cleaning. Any detergent specifically designed for auto scrubbers is compatible with use in the CS7010. Setting up the EcoFlex dilution strengths will be covered in the maintenance section. If your machine does not have the EcoFlex system, fill the solution tank to around halfway with water. Carefully measure and add your detergent so that you can reach the desired dilution level inside the solution tank. Hot or warm water cleans best but water temperature should not exceed 130 degrees Fahrenheit, 54 degrees Celsius. If your machine includes the dust guard side broom dust suppression system, then fill the dust guard tank with clean water. The inspection and preparation work is now complete. Drive machine to the area to be cleaned. Activation and use of the sweeping system. The sweep system can be used on its own or in combination with the scrub system. Activate the sweeping and dust control systems by pressing the one-touch activation switch in the sweep system section of the control panel. This will lower and activate the main and side rooms as well as activate the dust control systems. The switches in the sweep system will have an LED light lip to show what has become active, the main room, side rooms, and dust control vacuum system and dust guard if so equipped. If you wish to turn off a currently active system, for instance, want to turn off the vacuum dust fan for wet sweep bypass, press the fan switch and the fan and LED will turn off. The CS7010 is designed with brooms off in neutral functionality, which means that brooms and dust control system will only operate when the machine is in motion. This will reduce chance of brush polish marks on your floor as well as increase broom life, increase safety and reduce noise when stopped. The main broom float switch when activated will lower the main broom a little lower to the ground to help capture debris out of low spots on the surface as can happen in areas like asphalt parking lots. Using the sweep system in the main broom float position will slightly increase main broom wear. The filter shaker switch will activate the timed variable frequency filter shaker system. This will shake dust out of the dust control filter restoring airflow for better dust control. The sweep system will not operate while the hopper is raised. 
the display screen will show this image if the hopper is not fully lowered into the sweeping position. If brooms do not start as expected, verify hopper is fully lowered. To turn off sweeping and dust control systems, press the one touch switch again. Broom height adjustment will be covered in the maintenance section of this training. Your machine may also include the optional dust guard water mist based side broom dust suppression system. The dust guard system activation switch is in the sweeping section of the control board. The dust guard system consists of two misting spray nozzles at the side brooms, a water reservoir, a pump with a water filter which is located in between the engine compartment and the hopper. During sweeping, if the dust guard switch is on, the dust guard mist will start and stop with the main broom motion. If the misting tips do not spray an even fine mist, they can be removed for cleaning. Twist the yellow caps at the front of the machine to access the spray tip and filter. If you have not used the dust guard system in a while, or if the system was run dry, there may be bubbles in the supply lines. If they do not purge on their own after a few minutes of operation, remove the yellow spray tip caps, operate until water flows freely from both hoses, and then reassemble. When should you stop to empty the hopper? The only indication that the hopper is full is that you will begin trailing debris behind the machine while sweeping. When this happens, empty the hopper. Steps to empty the hopper. Turn off the sweeping system. To raise the hopper, press the hopper raise switch in the hopper control area of the control panel. When the hopper is raised, the transport maximum speed will be limited and the cleaning system will be disabled for safety. The hopper can be emptied low or raised up to dump into a dumpster with maximum clearance height of up to 60 inches or 152 centimeters. Carefully drive the machine to place the hopper over the location where you wish to empty it. Press the hopper door open switch, which will open the hopper door to empty its contents. Back up from the dumpster or dump location and once clear, lower the hopper by pressing the hopper lower switch. You are now ready to resume sweeping. At the end of the day, it is good practice to empty the hopper before storing. If the machine was used to sweep wet debris or if the machine develops an odor from the hopper, wash out the hopper before storing. Starting and stopping scrubbing. To begin scrubbing with the machine, the best practice is to first pre-wet the brushes by pressing and holding the solution switch for about five seconds to allow solution to flow to the brushes. This action will help to prevent damaging delicate floors by running dry brushes on them. Next, press the one touch scrub button switch. This will activate the entire scrub system and the indicator lights in the switch buttons will show this. The brushes and squeegee will lower to the floor. The scrub, vacuum, solution, and Ecoflex detergent system will be set to active. None of these systems will begin running, however, until the motion pedal is pressed. This prevents solution from gathering in puddles on the floor and helps prevent any brush polish marks on the floor. The display screen will display scrub parameters and additional information while scrubbing, including scrub down pressure with graph showing which one of three settings of down pressure are active setting one regular scrubbing in this instance solution flow setting with graph showing which one of four settings are active setting one lowest solution flow in this instance if equipped with ecoflex system this area of the screen will display the active detergent dilution ratio and what ecoflex dilution strength level is active on the machine in the graph the dilution ratio can be configured to display as percent concentration in the configuration menu. In addition, the display will show the current scrubbing speed. Scrubbing speed can be configured to display in either miles per hour as shown or in kilometers per hour in the configuration menu. The display will also include remaining solution tank level, remaining power, and the hour meter for the machine. The scrub parameter settings that will be active when you first press the scrub button are what were last used the last time the scrub system was active as default. Pressing the motion pedal forward will activate the full scrubbing function. The machine will move forward, solution will flow, the brushes will begin to spin, and the vacuum will turn on and recover the solution. While the machine is moving in reverse, the squeegee will raise automatically. To pause scrubbing, release the motion pedal. The machine, solution flow, and brushes will all stop. The vacuum will continue to run for 10 seconds to help clear the vacuum hose and squeegee of any remaining water.
To stop scrubbing, press the One Touch Scrub activation switch again. The solution will turn off, the scrub deck will lift from the floor, the vacuum will shut off after a brief delay to allow any remaining water to be picked up off the floor, the squeegee will raise automatically when the vacuum shuts off, and the scrub parameters will disappear from the display. That's basically it. The scrub, solution, vacuum, and detergent systems are all automatically activated when the one-touch switch is pressed. No further action is required other than pressing the motion pedal. Any individual system can be turned off or back on by simply pressing its switch at any time during scrubbing. Adjusting Scrub Parameter Settings Integrated Scrub Pressure and Solution Control, which makes it easy to adjust the cleaning power of the machine. The integrated control settings have been calibrated to use the correct combination of brush pressure and solution flow rate to clean at various scrub pressure settings. For the lowest cost of ownership and the greatest machine productivity, you should always use the minimum scrub pressure necessary to achieve the level of cleaning desired for the most productive and most economical cleaning. The one-touch scrub activation switch has pressure adjustments of plus and minus above and below the on-off switch. What scrub pressure is active is based on the number of bars shown in the display screen. One bar for regular scrubbing, two bars heavy scrub for more soiled areas, and three bars for extreme scrub for the dirtiest areas with stuck on debris. Each of the scrub pressures has a preset matching solution flow setting so that when you increase or decrease the scrub pressure, the solution is automatically adjusted up or down based on the scrub pressure setting. The solution flow level can also be adjusted independent of the scrub pressure as well. It can be completely turned off by pressing the solution button to turn it off. The solution graph will then show no bars. Or you can use the plus or minus buttons to adjust the solution flow setting. The next time the scrub pressure is adjusted, the solution level will again sync up with the scrub pressure level. Solution Flow Level 4 is a high flow mode for double scrubbing or other times when you want to put a lot of solution to the floor quickly. Smart Flow Solution Control. In addition to solution setting adjusting with scrub pressure selection, the CS7010 has an additional standard feature called Smart Flow that helps increase productivity by increasing the amount of scrubbing possible per solution tank of water. SmartFlow automatically adjusts the amount of solution applied to the brushes based on the travel speed of the machine. If the CS7010 is scrubbing faster, more water is applied up to the operator selected flow setting. If you have to slow down for tight maneuvering or congestion, the machine automatically scales back the water flow so that no more water than is necessary is applied, eliminating wasted cleaning capacity and detergent. This system is always active while in the scrub mode. Simply select water flow setting necessary to effectively clean and the machine automatically adjusts solution flow based on machine speed. Note, smart flow can be disabled and replaced with conventional volume per minute flow metering within the configuration menu. EcoFlex Onboard Detergent Metering System Models equipped with EcoFlex provide greater cleaning flexibility, save the operator time, and reduce cleaning cost, all while being more environmentally friendly. EcoFlex provides four distinct cleaning modes that can easily be selected and changed to best address the different areas and cleaning needs of your facility floors. One of the four cleaning modes is always active when the scrub system is active. The four cleaning modes are entered by either pressing the EcoFlex chemical bottle switch or the burst of power switch, both of which are found in the scrub section on the control panel. The mode you are in and the concentration for that mode are displayed on the lower left portion of the display. The four cleaning modes of EcoFlex include plain water cleaning mode, which applies just tap water to the scrub deck and is your most cost-effective cleaning mode that can be used in areas with very light soiling. No bars present in the detergent graph and LED in the detergent switch will be off. Minimum concentration detergent mode, which adds a specified small amount of detergent to help enhance the water's natural cleaning ability. While in this mode, a single bar in the graph will show along with the active concentration ratio 256 to 1 in this example, and LED in the detergent switch will be on. 
full strength detergent concentration mode for your more heavily soiled areas where a higher detergent concentration strength is needed to remove soils from the surface. This is indicated by both detergent graph bars on and the dilution ratio of 64 to 1 in this example and detergent switch LED being on. Burst of power mode, which increases scrubbing pressure, water flow, and detergent dilution strength one level above current settings, all with the push of a single control switch, and will revert back to the previous scrubbing configuration after one minute. This is ideal for addressing an area that is more dirty than the surrounding area, like a spill. The display will show this icon along with a countdown timer for when burst of power mode will expire. The actual duration of the burst of power mode is configurable in the configuration menu. Burst of power mode is entered by pressing the burst of power switch. All other modes are entered by pressing the detergent switch repeatedly, which will cycle through in the order of detergent off plain water cleaning, minimum concentration detergent, maximum concentration detergent, and back to off again when repeatedly pressing the detergent switch. Speed limiter feature the speed limiter which allows you to reset the machine's top speed for greater operator comfort. This means you do not need to hold the motion pedal at a certain angle to hold a desired speed while cleaning but can instead hold the pedal comfortably fully down when the speed limiter function is set. To use the feature scrub at the speed you want to be set at and then hit the speed limiter button switch. The LED in the switch will light up showing it is active. Unlike cruise control for an automobile, this feature rescales the top speed so you will now have variable pedal control of speed up to the new top speed you set it at. Press the speed limiter switch again to cancel this functionality and return the machine to the normal full speed setting. Double scrubbing. Double scrubbing leaves cleaning solution to dwell on the surface to help loosen stubborn stuck on dirt, oil and debris. To set the CS7010 into double scrub mode while scrubbing, turn off the vacuum by pressing the vacuum switch, which will turn off the vacuum and raise the rear squeegee. To prevent the side skirts on the deck from moving water off the surface being cleaned, they can be raised as well following these steps. Manually lift up on the side skirt mechanism, engage the yellow lock mechanism to keep the skirt off the floor, and repeat it for the other side as well. When finished double scrubbing, lower the side skirts again for proper water containment while scrubbing and recover the solution. To help maximize productivity and achieve great cleaning results, here are some tips. The CS7010 allows the flexibility to switch between sweeping, scrubbing, or the combination of both. Use the best system or both systems to provide the best results. Always stay alert and safe. Avoid distracted driving. Plan out and use an organized and logical cleaning route to optimize your cleaning coverage. Long straight cleaning lines are the most efficient. Keep a consistent overlap. Use the minimum settings for solution, detergent, and scrub pressure necessary to get the desired cleaning results. Doing so will increase cleaning time on the floor, run time, and reduce brush wear and detergent usage for a low total cost of cleaning. The CS7010 design allows better edge cleaning using the right side of the machine. Use the clear visibility provided on the right side of the machine to clean along walls and other obstructions. Approach intersections with caution and look carefully around corners to avoid a collision. Frequently look behind the machine to verify clean, safe, dry floors. Dumping and Refilling while using the scrub system, the solution tank will eventually get used up and the recovery tank will become full with the recovered water. The level of the solution tank is always available from the solution icon in the lower right corner of the display. Dumping and refilling the scrubbing tanks. The CS7010 utilizes dual float ball vacuum motor protection system to protect the vacuum motor from ingesting water. When the float ball system is activated, the vacuum motor will turn off and the display screen will flash this image. Usually, you will run out of water in the solution tank before the recovery tank float ball system activates. When the solution tank is empty, or the recovery tank full, transport the machine to a suitable location to empty it. Remove the recovery tank drain hose from its storage clip at the back of the machine and remove the cap. Bend the hose over to prevent flow and then release the hose at the drain opening. You can use your foot to control the flow if required. 
Reinstall the drain hose cap and put the hose back in its storage position after draining. After using the machine for a while, one of two things will occur. You will have completed your scrubbing task for the shift, or fuel level or battery level will have become depleted to the point of requiring a refill or recharge. Either way, the cleanup and storage process is the same. There is an icon on the display that provides feedback for fuel level or battery level. For LPG units, you will need to look at the LPG tank to determine fuel level. The icon looks quite similar for both battery and engine hybrid units and functions the same for both. When the fuel tank is full or battery fully charged, all bars will show. As you deplete the available power throughout your cleaning shift, fewer bars will show. Eventually, the fuel level will be used up. For engine hybrid units, the display will flash a gas pump icon to indicate you are near the end of the tank and should consider transporting back for a refill. You can run the fuel tank completely empty until the engine kills from lack of fuel since the hybrid system utilizes a battery backup system to allow you to transport back to the refill area. For battery machines, or when using hybrid machines in battery mode, when you deplete the battery, the machine will eventually hit the low voltage cutout point. When this happens, the display screen will change to what is shown and the scrubbing system will automatically turn off and raise but the vacuum and propulsion system will remain active to allow you to dry the floor and transport back to the dumping and charging location. In order to prepare the machine for storage, the first thing to do is to empty the sweeping hopper and the scrubbing recovery tank as covered previously, and rinse the recovery tank out thoroughly to remove any and all debris from the tank. To clean out the recovery tank, start by removing, emptying, and cleaning out the debris catch tray, and then replacing it. To clean out the recovery tank, leave the drain hose open and the lid open, spray the inside of the tank down. For better visibility of the inside of the recovery tank, release the latch to tip the tank partially out. You can release the connector if you wish to tip the tank all the way down, but only tip it all the way down when it is empty for safety. Make sure that the recovery tank vacuum float balls and cage are clean and each ball moves freely. You can leave the recovery tank lid open as you will want it to air dry overnight to prevent odors. Use a rag to wipe down the rear squeegee blade and inspect it to make sure that the blades are not ripped, torn, or overly worn. Flip or replace the rear blades as previously described to be ready for cleaning the next day. Use a rag to wipe down the side skirt blades and inspect them to make sure that the skirts are not ripped, torn, or overly worn. Flip or replace the skirts as previously described to be ready for cleaning the next day. Remove the scrub brushes. Rinse the brushes of any debris that is present. Inspect the brushes to see if they need to be replaced. Install the brushes as previously covered to keep them with the machine. You can also rinse down the deck area, but do not spray water directly at the drive motors for the brushes. It is good practice to empty the solution tank at the end of the cleaning shift if detergent has been mixed in the solution tank, since detergents can settle in the tank and clog the solution tank water filter. If your machine is equipped with EcoFlex system, you will not need to empty the solution tank since only clean water without detergent will be in the tank. To empty the solution tank, on the right side rear of the machine, by the rear squeegee and remove the cap. Then open the indicated ball valve to allow a solution tank to drain. Close valve, recap hose when complete. Charging machine batteries. For battery machines, the batteries should be recharged each day of use since batteries will have a longer service life if kept in a charged state when not in use. Never leave the machine for an extended time with the batteries in a discharged state as this will harm the batteries causing them to prematurely degrade and fail. To charge the batteries, open the right side battery compartment door, disconnect the battery cord from the machine, and connect to a proper charger to charge overnight. Finally, for all machine fuel types, keep your machine looking its best by taking a damp rag and clean off the exterior of the machine as necessary. Optional Equipment The CS7010 has a number of value-add options to increase productivity, cleaning flexibility, operator and machine safety. Most of the options are self-explanatory. Here are some comments about options that require some additional explanation. The vac wand stores a hose and wand at the side of the machine that can be assembled for picking up dirty solution from the floor in areas where the machine does not fit. 
With the scrub system off, press the vacuum switch to activate the vacuum once the wand is assembled and connected to the squeegee recovery hose. The wash hose kit provides low pressure water to wash down surfaces and machine during cleanup. Water is pulled from the solution tank for this option. While the machine is powered up, just pull the sprayer trigger for this option to be active. Extended scrub kit extends the scrubbing time per tank by reusing some of the recovered solution and reapplying this to the scrub deck. The high pressure pump kit is only available on engine hybrid machines. To use, connect the high pressure hose fitting to the connection just above the scrub deck on the left side of the machine. Press the high pressure pump switch to activate the pump which provides 2300 psi of pressure. Water for this option is pulled from the solution tank. Use proper safety precautions including eye protection and never direct the spray wand at yourself or any individuals nearby. This option will only work when no one is sitting in the operator seat. For safety, properly store the high pressure hose again before moving the machine. Solution fill shutoff kit is an option that fits inside the solution tank cover. Attach a fill hose to the hose connection and fill the tank. The water system will shut off the water flow when full. Hot water kit is for engine machines only and uses engine heat to heat water before it is dispensed to the scrub deck. This function will always be active on machines equipped with this option. Be careful when handling the brushes on machines with this option as hot water may still be present. Programming the EcoFlex dilution strength settings for machines that include the EcoFlex option. The EcoFlex system has two programmable dilution strengths that can be configured and readjusted at any time with the following procedure. Usually, this process is only completed when the machine is initially installed or when the detergent used is changed to a detergent with different dilution requirements. Before setting the dilution levels, you need to determine what the full strength detergent dilution recommended by the manufacturer is. You also need to determine a lower concentration setting that will be used for the low concentration mode. You need to have both of these settings figured out in a dilution ratio prior to programming the machine. Look at the label of the detergent bottle for the manufacturer's dilution recommendations. If a dilution ratio is not given, a percentage or a number of ounces per gallon may be given. Convert this to a dilution ratio. This will be used as the full strength detergent ratio. Determine a minimum detergent concentration level that is weaker strength than the selected maximum concentration. The CS7010 allows dilutions from a minimum of 300 to 1 to a maximum of 32 to 1 in 9 discrete ratio settings. To program these settings into the CS7010, start the machine and activate the scrub system. Press the detergent switch until the dilution mode is the maximum with two bars shown in the display. Press and hold the detergent switch for two seconds to enter change mode where the dilution ratio on the screen will begin to blink. Repeatedly press the detergent switch to cycle through the dilution ratios until you find a ratio equal to or near what you calculated for the maximum detergent concentration level. The setting will be locked in after the detergent switch stops being pressed for a few seconds. In this instance, the new maximum dilution level is 32 to 1. For setting the minimum detergent concentration level, place the machine in the minimum concentration mode with one bar in the detergent graph and repeat the above steps for entering the minimum concentration dilution level. Display menu navigation. During normal operation, when you press the eye information switch next to the display, you will have three areas you can further navigate to. These areas are hours of operation, faults, both active and logged faults available in this area, and system, which provides machine software version information. There is also a hidden menu for the supervisor to access that can modify other operational aspects of the machine. Refer to the operator menu for further details about the supervisor menu and how to access these configuration screens. There are a number of icons that the display screen may occasionally show these are included here with a quick explanation of their meaning. Solution tank empty indicator. Extended scrub active indicator. Emergency stop switch activated. No operator presence indication. Recovery tank full indicator. Parking brake engaged indicator. Hopper raised indicator. Hopper high temperature indicator. An option with the machine. Clogged hopper filter indication. 
check engine indication, oil pressure indicator, engine over temperature indicator, glow plug active indicator for diesel models, vacuum mode indicator, wand mode indicator, detergent purge active for EcoFlex models, battery low voltage indicator, burst of power indicator for EcoFlex models, main broom adjustment indicator, and side broom adjustment indicator. If the CS7010 self-diagnostics determines a critical fault, this icon will be shown in the display and the current active fault indication will be listed below it. Routine maintenance. To keep your machine investment functioning at its best, routine maintenance tasks must be properly completed according to the established schedule. This maintenance schedule is included in your operator's manual. Maintenance tasks are broken down into daily tasks and other tasks that should be completed based on hours of operation. Refer to the operator's or service manual for the full table details. Please take a moment to read through this list. Many of the items have already been covered in this module or are self-explanatory based on the description. Other items will be reviewed next. Broom Adjustments for Sweep System For proper sweeping performance and maximum broom life, it is important to adjust the main and side brooms to the proper sweeping height. The following will need to be completed periodically to compensate for broom wear and also whenever worn brooms are replaced with new ones. To begin the broom height adjustment procedure, drive the machine to a location where the floor will not be damaged by running the brooms with the machine stationary, such as a bare concrete floor. To begin the adjustments, press the bi-directional arrow switch on the control panel. Pressing the switch will toggle the adjustment mode between the side brooms and main brooms. At the same time, the indicator lights will flash adjacent to the main broom or the side broom buttons and the display will show either a side broom or main broom adjustment image. Though you cannot see the main broom rotating, you should be able to hear or feel it turning as you toggle between the modes. To adjust the side brooms, use the up or down buttons to visually adjust the side broom height. The proper height will have the right broom bristles just touching the floor in an arc between 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock. Note, do not adjust the brooms lower than recommended as cleaning performance will degrade and will also accelerate broom wear. Both side brooms are adjusted at the same time, so these brooms should always be replaced in sets. When you are at the desired height, do not push buttons for 10 seconds and the adjustment mode will cease and lock in the selected height. To adjust the main broom, press the double arrow broom selection switch until the main broom adjustment screen is visible. Note the relative broom height indicator bar on the display. A new broom should be in the proper adjustment if the bars are near the top of the position indicator. If there are two or fewer bars in the display, you either have the broom adjusted too low or the brooms are nearing wear limit and should be replaced. Adjust the broom downward until you hear the bristles contacting the floor. After the broom is in contact with the floor, lower it by one bar and let the broom run in place until the broom setting program exits and saves the broom height. Move the machine a short distance and inspect the polish strip left on the floor. The goal is to obtain a polish strip that is 2 to 3 inches, 5 to 7 and a half centimeters of uniform width. If the strip is too narrow, then the broom must be adjusted lower and if the strip is too wide, the broom should be adjusted higher. Note, if the main broom is set too low, the load on the sweeping motor will cause a main broom motor overload fault. Readjust the main broom height if the machine display shows a main broom motor overload fault. Dust filter maintenance. During normal use, the dust filter will get clogged by dust. The filter shaker should address the majority of the dust, but the dust filter should be removed and inspected weekly. If there is dried mud on the filter, wash or replace the filter since air will not flow through dried mud, therefore removing dust control. You can also help clean out a filter by blowing air from the clean side to the dirty side of the filter. To access the filter for maintenance, release hood latches and lift the hood. A hydraulic cylinder will hold the hood up automatically. Loosen the thumb screws that hold the dust filter in place via the filter shaker assembly. 
Lift out and hang the filter shaker on the provided hanger position. Lift out filter and inspect. Reassemble after doing filter maintenance. Rear squeegee adjustment. A well-maintained rear squeegee system is critical for providing clean, safe, dry floors. To function properly, a squeegee must sit on the floor with even squeegee blade deflection as shown here across the full length of the squeegee. An out-of-adjustment squeegee will have poor water pickup and result in premature wear of the squeegee blades. If the squeegee is not sitting flat and even on the floor, lower the squeegee and use the squeegee adjustment handle to adjust the squeegee tilt. Battery maintenance for battery powered machines. Batteries that get low on water will have their runtime and usable life significantly degraded. Battery water level should be checked on a weekly basis to prevent premature failure of batteries. To check battery water level, open the battery compartment access doors. Carefully remove caps one by one and look at the water level for each cell. Water level should be above plates but below the top to allow for water expansion. If water level is low, add distilled water to the cells. Fill water to above the plates but around 1 8 inch below the fill well. Do not fill to the top of the fill well. Caution: Inside the battery is a powerful acid and water mix. Avoid contact with it. Wear safety glasses and gloves and wash hands after checking. Note: The batteries used for the hybrid engine machines are maintenance free. Solution filter maintenance. The solution filter should be cleaned on a weekly basis and also if solution does not flow down to the brushes when expected and other obvious checks have been completed, like solution control button light on and verifying that solution is actually in the tank, then it is likely that the solution filter is clogged. The solution filter is located on the right rear of the machine. Look for the filter indicator logo in the rotomolded tank. There is a ball valve just before the filter allowing you to turn off the water and avoid dumping the solution tank prior to servicing the filter. Unscrew the filter housing and wash the internal filter screen out in a sink and then reassemble and turn back on the ball valve. The water recovery vacuum filter is located behind a door at the top of the recovery tank. It protects the recovery vacuum motor from dust and sand. It should be removed and cleaned on a weekly basis. Remove and simply rinse it under water and then shake the water out of it and reinstall it. EcoFlex system purging. This process can be completed each time a detergent change is made to the machine and should be completed once per week to keep the system working properly. Park the machine over a floor drain since concentrated detergent is released from the machine's scrub deck during this process. Tilt the seat forward to access the EcoFlex concentrated detergent bottle and remove the small gray cap from the top of the EcoFlex bottle. With the machine on and the scrub system off, press and hold both the detergent switch and the solution switch simultaneously for two seconds. This will initiate the 20 second EcoFlex automated purge sequence. During this action, the display will show the image along with a countdown timer for the process. Lubrication. There are a few key mechanical points on the machine that should be lubricated on a monthly basis. The attached diagram from the operator's manual highlights these locations. This concludes the instructional portion of this training. After successfully completing this training module, you will be able to identify CS7010 systems, components and their function, explain how to inspect and prepare the machine for daily use, list the steps necessary to start, stop and adjust the sweeping function, list the steps necessary to start, stop and adjust the scrubbing functions, explain how to efficiently and safely operate the machine for daily cleaning, explain machine cleanup procedure, understand optional features and how to use them, describe battery charging and fuel process, and perform daily, weekly, and other routine maintenance tasks. Visit us on the web at nilfiskyou.com. Nilfisk University is the cleaning equipment industry's most comprehensive web-based training and interactive learning resource. Your degree in success is just a click away at Nilfisk University.